Welcome to the Global Prayer Network, with Rev. Dr. Seth O. Lardy. We pray this teaching will impact your life, and bring you closer in your walk with Jesus. Let's get ready to receive today's teaching from, Rev. Dr. Seth O. Lardy. On yesterday, just before we concluded, the story or the history or the narrative was shared with us about uh, this parent and this child who, uh, while growing up, had become now an adolescent and young adult and all of that, uh, but was continuously problematic. Uh, but thank God, in the end, the young man is doing well, doing much better, etc. That goes back to what the Bible said. The Bible said, train up the child in the way he or she should go. And when he or she is old, they will not depart away from it. And so really, the truth be told, our little beautiful babies, from zero to 12, those are very important years to ensure that they go in the right direction. They know the truth. They understand the word of God. Just like those of you who bring your children to be baptized, especially in Methodist churches, we tell you that as soon as the child is old enough to understand, you should in fact inform the child that this child has been baptized and you must teach the child the importance and the essence of what happened when they were baptized. Teach the child the way he or she should go. And when he or she is old, and be, I mean, the Bible is so, is so wise. I mean, because sometimes we think that because a person went to Sunday school, went to church, went to vacation Bible school, was in church every Sunday, we prayed at home, we read the Bible, we did all of the religious things, we got you baptized and everything else. And it means that you will not astray or go astray. The possibility is there. And that's why the scripture says, when the child is still a child, make sure you train them up in the way that they should go. Once you plant the seed, once you establish the foundation, once you have built a solid wall of grace, mercy, love, faith around that child. When he or she strays away from the path by the grace of God, they will come back. And so we thank God that uh, the individual that the parent was talking about has come back to his senses, is married and is doing well. We thank God for that. So please do not Hear me? Do not allow your child to not know about the love of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God, the peace of God, the power of the resurrection, the salvific story of Jesus, and what that means to us. Make sure you teach your children the way that they should go so that when they're old, they will not depart away from it. And let's say if the child departs away from it, what do you do? You continue praying, you continue trusting God, you continue believing God that that child will come back. What you must never do, you must never give up because it is part of the promise of God to you that not only you are going to be saved, but your children, your household, 
will come to know him as Lord and as Savior. So we thank God for that wonderful, marvelous story that was told. Do we have time today, I believe, for one testimony of victory? Do we have time for one testimony of victory? Do we have anyone who has experienced in the last 72 hours a major victory in your life that you are not ashamed to share with us? Anyone? All right. All right, all right. When you do, well, Bishop, yes, I'm I'm here. This is Tanya. Okay, go right ahead. I I just want to share with everyone my victory. Mm -hmm. uh, on yesterday, I had a scheduled procedure to remove a kidney stone, mm -hmm. and the kidney stone, once they started the surgery procedure, was not there. Mm -hmm. I count that all glory and a miracle. Man. Now we had, um, and once they um, put me back together, you know, we had just a little aftermath of, you know, a little vomiting, a little pain, but I'm, I'm doing very well. I'm thankful to God and thank God for prayers of the saints. Thank you. Thank God for the word. I counted a miracle. That's what I counted. And I counted all joy. <laughs> just Man. wanted to let you guys know my victory. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Scheduled surgery. If they had not had a reason, it would not have been scheduled. There was a reason it was scheduled, but guess what? Almighty God Hallelujah. had supernaturally intervened. We have that kind of God who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can even ask or we can even think. Thank you so much for sharing that wonderful, marvelous <laughs> event of victory in Jesus. Amen. Uh, Thanks and glory be to God. And you're welcome. <laughs> we want to continue today talking about the home. As we know, we are talking about how it is important for us to reclaim our homes and our families for God. This is no time to be casual. This is no time to be loose about it. This is time for us to be serious about our families. We talk about insurance. We talk about this. We talk about that. We talk about the other. This is time for us to be talking about salvation for the family. This is time for us to be making sure that our children our loved ones know Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior for so many reasons. You know, we just heard what happened here. Uh, one was scheduled for surgery, and the doctors began the work just to discover there was no kidney stone. God is that kind of God. God is a healer. God is a supernatural working God. There may be times our children, our loved ones may find themselves in some difficult places with no one to turn to. But if they know Jesus, if they can call on the name of Jesus, it will make all the difference in the world. There are times in our lives when things are not going the way we had scheduled, the way we had planned, the way we had purposed, the way we had dreamt. None of those things are happening. And what is happening? The only thing that can sustain us is knowing that God will make a way. God will provide. God will open doors. God, in fact, is going to be there when no one else is there. So whatever we can do for the family, Make sure they know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. There will be times when they will have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Imagine walking through the valley of the shadow of death, feeling the presence of evil, feeling the presence of destruction, feeling the presence of the enemy but you still have to walk. You can't stop. 
You can't stand still. You can't lie down. You can't give up. You can't throw up your hand. The psalmist said, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, death is surrounding you. Disappointments are surrounding you. Evil is surrounding you. Setbacks are surrounding you. Folk are laughing at you. Folk are thinking you will never, ever succeed. You ask surround it but what he says don't stop now keep on marching forward why because as long as the lord is your shepherd as long as the lord is with you keep on marching you will come through you will come through he will see you through he will deliver you and those friends and others who are looking down on you today will one day have to look up to you. Those who are trying to destroy you today will have to one day come begging you. Don't stop now. Keep walking. Keep marching. Keep moving forward. The Chinese have a proverb that if you can keep marching forward, you will succeed. And so I wanna just encourage all of us today to make sure our families, our children are in fact under the blood stained banner of Jesus Christ. It hurts you not to call them and ask them, have you given your life to Christ? And don't just call and ask if they've given themselves to Christ, but are they walking? the ways of Christ because it's not enough just to say I'm born again. It's one thing to be born again. It's another thing to walk in the ways, walk in the will and walk in the word of God. And if you stumble and fall, get up, dust yourself off, Ask him to forgive you and keep pressing on to the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. As we said, the reason for this particular series, because the one area that the enemy is creating a lot of havoc is in the family. If you recall, one of the first messages we shared with you that there are no perfect families, no perfect families. After Genesis chapter three, there are no perfect families. The very first family, Adam and Eve, it was not quite even, I would say five years when there was murder in the family, when one brother killed the other brother. If you remember how they continue to blame each other in the garden, that has not stopped. The enemy is still busy trying to destroy marriages, destroy relationships, destroy the family. He is busy. And my sisters and my brothers, just as he is busy, we too need to be extra busy. Standing on the promises of God, keeping God on our minds, loving him with all our heart, soul, and mind. We, we ought to be just as intentional, just as the devil has all kinds of tricks, we should have all kinds of truth because the way to combat the enemy is with the truth of the word of God. If you remember, when Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights, when the enemy came and attacked him, it was on the word. The enemy said, you say you're the son of God? Okay, turn these stones into bread. Jesus didn't come arguing about whether he was or was not. No, he simply told him the truth. And what was the truth? The truth was and is man shall not live by bread alone. And sometimes we think that one victory is enough for the devil. No, he is going to come right back. That's why you have to stay firm. 
That's why you have to stay prayed up. That's why you have to stay fasted up. That's why you have to remain in the word of God because he is coming back. He came back the second time. Jesus, you're the son of God. Why don't you climb way up on the top and throw yourself down? See what will happen. Did he not say he would give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways? Jesus didn't argue with him. Jesus simply told him the truth again. And you would have thought it was been enough for the devil. He came back. He came back. And Jesus had to what? Again, give him the word. You must worship the Lord your God and him only. So I want to say to you today, because you had a victory yesterday, you had a victory last year, you had a victory 10 years ago, don't stop now. Don't quit now. Keep on keeping on. Because that boy, he's in the corner lurking to see whom he can devour. God asked him when the children of Christ got together, the sons of God gathered together, the devil showed up in the company. God said, where are you coming from? What, what are you doing here? He said, oh, I've just been going up and down to see who I can devour, who he can tear up, what individual, what family he can tear up. So I say to you, it is your right, it is your duty, especially as a father, as a mother, as head of your family, to make sure they know the Lord and they are walking in his way. You say, well, they don't want to hear me. Mm -hmm. Yes. They don't want to listen to me. Yes. True. But guess what? Don't stop. Whenever you have an opportunity, if they don't want to listen to you, write them a little letter. Put a scripture in there. Send them a card with a scripture. Just as the enemy finds a million ways to get to us, you too must find creative ways to get the word to your family. Yes. Because when Jesus comes, just as in the day of Noah, when Noah built that ark, Folk were laughing at him. Oh, look at this man. You know, I heard a preacher say that you had some sophisticated people to build the Titanic. And the Titanic sank. You had an amateur to build the ark. And the ark lasted. Because when God does what God does, hallelujah. It's going to last. So our children, our families, and our homes must be under the dominance of God. And don't let the enemy for a moment sneak in to destroy your family. It's a wonderful thing to look down in a casket at your loved one and say, yes, I know where they're going to. It's just like getting in an airplane when the doors are closed and the plane pulls away from the gate. You can say, I know where they're going. Yes, but what a tragedy to look down in a casket and your heart is heavy because you know you have not done what you should have, could have done. I say to all of us today, don't let it be said to you, you were the reason your loved one didn't know Christ. You do your part. If they don't listen, you do your part. Call them, write them, text them. Do whatever it takes. And don't just do it once a year now. I told you about St. Uh, Monica 
who had a son. And for 30 years, every day, she prayed for that boy. And when God got ready, turned him around. And today you cannot go to any seminary where they teach preachers, church leaders. You cannot go to any divinity school where they do the same kind of work. You cannot go to a Bible college without hearing about that young man today. And we're talking way back three something BC. Today, he is still making an impact on the church. When you hear talk about the creation, God created the universe, ex nihilo. That's from St. Augustine. For 30 years, every day. That's why you cannot get discouraged. You cannot give up. You have to see with your heart and not with your eyes when it comes to the salvation of our children. Because if you look with your eyes, <laughs> you, you just might get discouraged. You prayed, you prayed, the son went off, come back drunk. You prayed, you prayed, you prayed to go in and do some interesting things. You got to see with your heart. Believe with your heart. Believe and trust God. So as we said on yesterday, children must be encouraged. Children must be edified. And children must be motivated. They must be what? Encouraged. That is to support them. Support them with confidence, with hope. Encourage them to continue on the right path. To accomplish their dreams. Got to encourage them. Got to encourage them. Children need encouragement. The world is so broken. And it's not by action that the world is broken. The world is broken because of sin. Things were going to happen. They'll be bullied. Folk would talk about them. Folk would do bad things to them. They'll be treated unfairly. But you got to encourage them. Then you got to edify them. We said to edify is to instruct or improve someone morally or intellectually. Children have to be edified. No child is born with all the knowledge in the world. That's why we are parents. That's why we are adults. To teach them. To instruct them. Morally, what to do, what not to do, how to go about it, how not to go about it. That's why sometimes some people get to the place and they say, oh, if only I could hear my mama's voice again. Because you, you find yourself with no one to tell you the truth. People see you walking down the street naked and they say you're looking well. Oh, but mama will tell you the truth prayerfully. So children must be edified. Then they must be motivated. And what is motivation? Motivation is to provide someone with a motive to do something. Provide them with an incentive. Give them a strong desire to do well and to succeed. I wonder what kind of uh, motivation that Tiger Woods' father gave to him. That at an early age, his father would take him out to teach him how to play golf. I wonder what kind of incentive that the parents of the Jackson Five, Michael Jackson, What kind of incentive 
Sister Williams, the Williams girls and their tennis game, what kind of incentive? Children must be motivated in the name of Jesus. But not only must they be encouraged, edified, and motivated, there's something we must not do. And that is to negatively criticize them. Now, there is such a thing as positive criticism. You know, if, if, if the shoes is not on right and you tell the child put the shoes on right, that's, that's positive. But what we must not do is to negatively criticize children. You break their spirits. You destroy their inner man when you negatively criticize a child. What is negative criticism? Negative criticism is an objection to something only with the purpose of showing that it is wrong, it is false, it is mistaken, it is nonsensical, it's objectionable and disreputable. You have no other reason to criticize, but just to show that you're wrong, you're false, you're mistaken, you're nonsensical. Hmm? And some people are like that. The only reason why they are negative, because they want to prove you wrong. They want to prove you to be false. They want to prove you to be a mistaken person. They want to prove you that you're nonsensical. They want to just get rid of you. I was talking to the supervisor. And I said, you know, in order for a person to be negative towards somebody else, they have to be a negative person on the inside. If you find a person that is always finding the fault, finding what's wrong, finding the evil, finding all, they are themselves very, very negative. Because the Bible says, you know, you can't get sweet water from a ugly, dirty pipe. No, you can't do that. So children must not be negatively criticized. If you're gonna criticize a child, let it be positive. I give you an instance. There was a program we used to have and we'll be talking more about it one of these days. It's called Religious Education Release Time Program. It is a program whereby in 1956, the Supreme Court passed a ruling that a local church could go to a public school with the permission of the parents and bring children to the church and teach them religious education. We were doing that program in one of the most uh, difficult schools and we saw the transformation in the life of those children. But then something happened. There was a little boy who he would come to class and he would just look down and just like he was out of it. And what we discovered was that him and his mother were just not getting along. They had a problem. And so one day we asked him, what happened? He was saying his mama don't want him to go out play with friends. His mama want him to be home for curfew, this, that, and other. And the more we had the conversation, we discovered what was happening. His father, her husband, was in prison. And she did not want her son, her only son, to go down the same path and end up in prison. When he said that, 
we explained to him, we shared with him, son, your mama is not being difficult with you. She's not being, you know, rebunctious with you. She wants to save you. And as we shared with him, then we shared with him the word of God that said, honor your father and your mother. When we shared with him the word of God, somehow the light bulb came on in his mind. He said, oh, really? He was one of those that on days that when we couldn't meet, he would be asking, where are the people? Where are the people that will tell me something that will help me? When we give children positive feedback, they will change. But negativity, downing them, destroying them wouldn't work. There's a story, you know it, in John, the eighth chapter. John chapter eight, as a matter of fact, let me read it for us. In John chapter eight, beginning at uh, the third verse, let me read for you this interesting story. It says, and the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have is and accuse him, to accuse him. But Jesus took down and with his finger root on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they who heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the elders, even unto the last. And when Jesus left, was left alone and the woman standing in the midst, when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Had no man condemned thee? And Jesus said, he, she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Constructive criticism brings about deliverance. Destructive criticism seeks to destroy. Those men sought to destroy that woman. They came and they were very, very adamant to destroy the woman. But Jesus interceded. Jesus intervened. Jesus advocated for that woman. And Jesus said, and actually he was talking to the guy who was involved himself. Because if she was caught in the act, she could not have been acting by herself. And Jesus said, any one of you standing here who is without sin, you have my permission. Cast the first stone. One by one. One by one. They left. What am I saying to us? If the truth be told, sometimes we make demand on our children that we ourselves are not keeping. We gotta be careful. We gotta be careful. Don't teach your child about the importance of being on time and you are always lit. 
they're saying more than they can hear. Don't tell your child about prayer and the importance of prayer when the child never ever sees you praying. Be careful, don't tell your child about being respectful to adults, to parents, when you yourself, you are not respectful to your parents. Be careful. That we are going to claim our children, reclaim them for Christ. We got to remember that they need to be encouraged. They need to be edified. They need to be motivated. And be careful with destructive, negative criticism. Be positive because your positivity only shows where your mind is, where your heart is. The Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart. The Bible says, whatsoever things are good, lovely, and of good report, think on these things. And so if your mind is right, your heart is in the right place, it will be reflective in how you treat your children. Remember, by the grace of God, fast, pray, work to reclaim your home and your family for God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.